the dog Candy me Salty dog Well if you won't be my candy man I won't be your salty dog Little red light Little green light Little red light Little green light Little red light Little green light The way you stop on the red and go on the green Don't you mess with Mr. In-Between Run and get the bucket, get your baby some beer. Run and get the bucket, get your baby some beer. Run and get the bucket, get your baby some beer. Run and get the bucket, get your baby some beer. Run and get the bucket, get your baby some beer. Well, I'm doing the thing in this God Almighty world. Keep my candy man here. Ooh, 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 ooh. I always tell students that the basic courses are the ones to focus on because those are the ones that are always going to be there for you. Learn to think like an artist. Gingerbread man, Santa Claus. Gingerbread man, Santa Claus. My name is Stephen Wirth. I live in Pacoima, California and I am 55. I'm the speed limit. I was born in Glendale, California. I grew up in a town that was uh, kind of leave it to beaver style. It was, it was uh, a very nice place to grow up. Uh, I had uh, uh, a lot of friends. I walked to school every day. I always, when I was a kid, was fascinated with with creating new worlds and and I loved Disneyland I loved the idea of cartoons I loved all that stuff and at Halloween I would decorate our garage and I had a ghost with with a horse head skull and and glowing lights for eyes and I'd terrify the neighbor kids my brother and I would make monster models the Ravel model kits and I had the entire collection with creature from the black lagoon and frankenstein and dracula and uh, I went away to summer camp one year, year and uh, came back and my mom had thrown them all away. She said she thought it was a bad influence for me. And too bad too, because those models are worth a lot of money now. <laughs> when I grew up, I wanted to be a lot of things. The first thing I wanted to be, I was actually a photographer. And my dad was very interested in photography and, and we had a color dark room in the basement and I had the drums that would go around and around and, and uh, make color prints and all that kind of stuff. And from that, I kind of graduated in getting interested in graphic design. And I ended up going to college for graphic design. And then halfway through college, I, I found animation. And then animation was what I wanted to do. When I got out of college, I had, I was kind of letting fate choose what I was going to end up doing. I either wanted to get into video editing or animation and I uh, put out resumes and tried to get an entry-level job. I got a job at a small commercial studio that did uh, television commercials and they had an animation division. I wear a million different hats. I can do everything from doing voices to editing to doing sound. And I've uh, been really lucky to work with with great people and, and interesting projects. I, I'm probably the only person in animation who can say that I was never ashamed of the show I was working on. <laughs> I was working for John Chris Felusi at Spumco and we were closing down the studio and, and uh, I was packing up John's library into boxes. There were uh, shelves just full of great cartooning and art books and, and a, a lifetime's worth of, of, uh, of great reference material for artists and as I'm shoving it in boxes I'm thinking to myself you know in a box this does nobody any good at all and uh, I'd been interested in computers and that sort of thing and I thought to myself you know if you took all this stuff and digitized it and put it into a database you could probably uh, syndicate it over the internet to people all over the world and end up having one book uh, help out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different artists. So when I left Spumco, I decided to create uh, 
a digital archive because I'm into into using art from the past to inform art of the present. One of the first people that I met in animation was June Ferre. She and Bill Scott. Um, June Ferre was the voice of Rocky the Flying Squirrel and Bill Scott was Bullwinkle Moose. They were uh, involved with an organization called the CIFA that was an international organization for animation. Uh, they invited me to join when I was just a kid in college and I joined and I, I was amazed that all of these famous animation stars were just easy to access. I, I would look in the phone book and there's Grim Natwick, the man who created Betty Boop and animated Snow White in the phone book. I call him up, I say, can I come by and visit you? He says, sure, come on down. And, you know, I sit on his porch and he tells me stories. Um, but June was very special. And after I created the archive, ASIFA, the, uh, the organization that June was, uh, was uh, one of the pioneers of, uh, voted to give me a Lifetime Achievement Award, the June Ferre Award, at the Annie Awards. This was maybe about five years ago, six years ago. Uh, it was a really great honor, but it was mostly an honor because June herself presented the award to me. If I had to think about how I wanted to be remembered, it would be something that I created, like the archive or like internet cartoons, because I did the very first animated uh, web cartoon. I'd like to to know that something that I started is still going. My advice for young artists is several things. Um, first and foremost is to gain the skills that you need to make a concentrated effort to draw, paint, use color, the fundamentals of knowing where you came from so that you know where you're going, you know, the, the history of, of art, the history of film, the history of design, the history of architecture, the history of music, all those things. Especially for an animator, you have to know a little bit about everything. I was talking to a kid artist the other day at the studio I work at, and uh, he asked me about my ring, which I don't have on right now, but uh, I have Bella Lugosi's ring. And I said, oh, I have Bella Lugosi's ring. And he said, who's Bella Lugosi? And I went, and I wanted I wanted to cry because, you know, we don't think about pop culture and as being something that needs to be studied, but maybe we do. You know, I mean, when you don't even know who Bella Lugosi or Clark Gable or, or Alfred Hitchcock are anymore, I mean, what's, what's, what kind of world do we live in? You know, in the past, people knew Plato and Socrates that came thousands of years before them. And why don't we know uh, people who lived just maybe a hundred years ago? Learn to think like an artist.